Vamos a empezar la... Good morning. We have amongst us Mr. Leancho García. The title of his talk is Chess, Having Fun Learning to Think. Leoncho is an expert on this matter. Since uh, he was 13, when he started to play chess, and he became the absolute winner in Gipuzkoa, in this province, along his career, he's cooperated with uh, many uh, media uh, France Press, La Gazette du Nord, EFE Agency, uh, National Radio in Spain, uh, Radio Televisión Española, during the Kasparov uh, World Cup between Kasparov and Karpov 1997, etc., etc. He's given talks about chess in many countries. He's forecast uh, his comments on the most important uh, international tournament since 2007. He had a fixed section on Sundays in a specific radio program about chess. In, two, in 2014, he started to work with Abibir program uh, during the weekends in Televisión Española. I now give the floor to Leoncho. Thank you very much indeed. Good morning. Good morning and thank you for being here in this precise room because the offer of the many other rooms uh, today is very attractive. I'm I'm going to start talking about a miracle because I think it's the best word to define what happened on the 11th of February in the Spanish uh, February in the uh, National Assembly in Parliament. It's, it's the only way that all political parties in Spain agree around something. What this was about promoting chess as a uh, subject matter. That it was that uh, uh, whimsical. D because we could agree on chess and not on many other things. No, the reasons were exactly the ones which convinced the European Parliament in 2012, so that what 461 uh, MPs uh, in Europe, more than 400 people, agreed on a very similar topic. When we speak about more than 400 MPs in Europe, we are talking from, from people from the uh, left wing to the right wing, and everybody agreed on this important role of chess. Why these decisions? Because they're based on very uh, solid motives with a scientific basis. And I'm going to sum up these motives in the next few minutes. But before that, just uh, an explanation on the title of my talk. It's very funny. It's, uh, there are many taboos around uh, chess, having fun learning to think. Uh, people say, yeah, it's my, it must be very interesting, but chess is only for very clever people. That's not for me. It's not a game for me. This is like comparing somebody who likes running in the park uh, from time to time and a professional of marathon. Both people run, but they are totally different in their uh, sport in practice. Playing chess uh, for his free time or being an educator of chess uh, in schools, it's different. But being a grandmaster and belonging to the uh, world elite of chess is a different thing. If you want to be a professional of marathon, you have to have specific genes and spe special talent and then work very hard to develop that talent. But then becoming an occasional runner is uh, at the reach of anyone. And everybody can be a runner. Disabled people, even disabled people can run. And people say that chess is boring. Well, if you want to become a high competitor, and if you don't like chess, you're going to be uh, tired of it. It's going to be boring, but this applies to any other sporting or cultural uh, activity. If we're talking about using chess to educate children, and given for granted that the teacher has a passion and a vocation for his work or her work, the risk that a child gets bored in a chess class is very low because here we're talking about using chess as a tuition tool, as a pedagogic tool to learn and to teach how to uh, think. We're not going to create chess players. This is done in a club, not in a school. So it's a different activity. The percentage of children which reject chess is very low. For this reason, I say, and I underline this, that um, 
having fun learning to think with chess, and chess is the best video game on the planet, even though there are many good video games from the didactic point of view. But if you've played for a thousand times with the same video game, normally you get bored after a time. But in chess, it's just the opposite trend. Chess is what Socrates said. I only know that I know nothing. As you get to learn chess, you know more and more, and you need to learn more and more. So I never got bored with chess in my life. It's now 42 years since I started to play chess. I was a semi semi professional uh, player for more than 10 years. I'm, and I'm, I'm a uh, researcher, I'm a uh, speaker about chess, and I've never got bored. People say it's boring, but it's their opinion. It's not, it's against mine. If you are passionate for chess, it's impossible to get bored. What about the arguments and the motivations? This is just a, a snapshot. And with all these arguments, this is enough so that chess should be a subject matter in schools from tomorrow onward, in all schools in the world. But there are many other motives, many, many other reasons. More than a 120 years of research in the world, there are many studies and surveys that have been published, serious, reviewed um, studies, many references in countries with various uh, political regimes, and the vast majority uh, reached the same conclusion. Students of uh, educational chess, and this is a distinction, I'm not talking about um, children who play chess. This is just for training. Of course, it's a sport. It, it, it's, it's a training sport, but now we're talking about educational chess, chess as a tool in classrooms. Most of... Uh, uh, educational chess students improve their intelligence at many levels, many parameters of intelligence are improved, and their uh, school results do improve by around 17% more than other students, especially in maths and in uh, reading and writing. In Spain, when somebody in schools or among teachers or among intellectuals say that maths and reading, uh, there's a resonation about the PISA report because most of Spanish children are, be, are having very bad results in the PISA service, especially in maths and reading. So chess improves maths and reading results and grades. Here I write down Catalonia because these uh, this uh, pilot experience uh, in Catalonia in more than 100 uh, Catalan schools, it was promoted by the uh, Catalan government. There is a parallel scientific research uh, to chess classes that is designed by the uh, Catalan universities. And even though the final results uh, will not be known until the end of this year, I do know because I have uh, first-hand uh, information that these results are going to be excellent. I know it because there are surveys amongst all the um, uh, teachers in these 140 schools and the satisfaction uh, index is above 85%. And all say that the conclusions are going to be very similar to the ones I just mentioned, and very similar to the ones that were carried out in Trier, which is a, a German um, a town, and or in Aarhus in Denmark. In Aarhus, uh, we have data from the last study. I just have a sum summary, but the conclusion is impressive. Students who, who followed educational uh, chess uh, courses improved uh, their math results by 30 percent, so more than 70, 17 percent. In, in Trier, in Germany, this is especially interesting. I just love this example. And they did this experience for four consecutive school years, not just one. Uh, primary school, class, class A and cl class B, so two classes. All uh, uh, students of class A are going to have one uh, hour less of maths every week. In exchange, they will have one hour of chess. All the students of class B are going to uh, have three hour, hours of maths every week and no chess. The, the maths teacher is the same in the two classes. And the result is that for four consecutive years, class 
Class A students got an average uh, grade which was much better than Class B. So from the point of view of pedagogical efficiency, the conclusion of this study is that two hours of maths plus one chess are more, more efficient than three hours of maths every uh, week without chess. So it is obvious to think that chess and maths are interconnected. But why, and that was a question I asked myself for many years, why students receiving educational class classes do read better than others and they understand better what they read? There are two logical questions. Chess develops concentration a lot. If you are really concentrated when you read, you understand and you read better. The other reason is a bit touchy, but I think I think it's very interesting. When we read and play chess, our mm, brain processes are quite similar. In both cases, we do recognize signs. In one case, there are letters and then uh, pieces of different sizes and colors. We are associating those signs with each other forming words or forming uh, combinations of plays, uh, moves, and we are uh, reaching to conclusions of our actions in both activities. So children which are, who are used to this brain process because they uh, often play chess, they have automatisms. And when they start reading, they read better than the others. The, uh, the Margulis wor uh, work or study is quite um, popular and they actually underline the same reasons, but that's much more than this, although it's quite significant. There are many qualities uh, related to chess, many talents. Uh, there are many slides. I will show you just one out of 24. I'm not going to be comprehensive because it, it's needless. Most of these uh, qualities are quite common sense. Any person having played intense chess knows that chess develops all these qualities that we're going to see here. But I will allow myself to underline some of these qualities or talents because I think they are specifically, uh, sp particularly important. And this uh, adequates to our 21st century society, self-criticism. In chess, there is a sacred uh, habit when both uh, players end their game, and this, if this is the, the game room, both get up and regardless of the result, they go to another room, which is the analysis room, and there they do analyze together the game they, they just finished. They do criticize that game, and they self-criticize themselves. They clear out doubts. Oh, I, I thought, are you going to do this? Why didn't you do that? Oh, yes, I thought about that, but I thought that was much, uh, that was worse for the, for the next moves, and both learn from the, the others. And chess, in, the loser learns much more because you cannot say that it's the fault of the referee. You can't say that the uh, pitch is full of mood or mud or because it's raining. It's your fault. If I play with against you today, and if I lose, it means because today you played bet, bet, better than me. And then I have to ask myself, what did I do, do wrong? Because I lost. Why? What was my mistake? What do I have to do not to repeat that mistake again in the future? If we apply this or the, if we transfer this to our daily life, this is an important virtue or important quality to be a person able to recognize his or her mistakes. We might be uh, happier than others when do we do self-criticize us. I will explain why, but the mm, mm, forecasting and pre um, preventing consequences, that is thinking ahead, thinking what are the consequences of your act, actions, and this is very important. Other skills that are improved are quite easily to understand. I'm not going to repeat them. Out of these six here, this one, to be able to um, be attentive to many things at the same time. And I think that women are superior to us in general terms. But chess does contribute to balance this capacity, this ability to be able to do things, various things at the same time. 
You are playing against me and you are blocking my passage on the upper part of the board. Your king is protected on the top part of the board and I'm doing the same underneath. I like to attack. It's, you are doing the, your castling move, but my decision is different to yours. I have to have a, an overall vision of the board. I prefer defending myself. If your initiative forces me to do eight consecutive defensive moves, I will have to do that. I will have to attack later on. I have to wait. But if I want to do what I have to do, I'm going to lose. If I do concentrate only on attack, and if I can't see his castling, I'm going to lose. And this can be transferred to our daily life. It's important to have a global view of all the situations we are before making decisions, especially not to fool ourselves about these decisions. Global vision is very important. On these other six skills, well, spatial calculation, about spatial calculation, we're going to do something very funny, I think. Adriana Salazar and myself, at 3.30 this afternoon, we have a joint talk in the A1 room. There is a, a theater a sketch related to spatial calculation. When I play a game of chess, the position that I want to see with uh, big letters are not the one that I see with my eyes. I want to see what is happening in, in four movements according to what I do now. I want to see and see ahead what is going to happen in four moves. So my position with my eyes in the board can be uh, disturbing because I have to assess if I need to do G5 with my uh, um, with my bishop with H5 with my pawn and my question is this position that I see in my head in four moves is it interesting for me or is it better for my rival of, with for my opponent if in that case I will have to look for another move to think ahead four moves. So this means spatial calculation. My spatial vision is highly developed with chess. And as we will see uh, this afternoon with Adriana at 3.30 PM. And we, you might agree with me to say that this is an essential skill. You have to be an architect. You have to imagine your building. But for any of us not being architects, even for four-year-old children, spatial calculation is uh, of foremost importance. We're going to see a video of spatial calculation. There are many films about chess. Some of them are horrid, horrid, and some of them are very good. One was Oscar winner for the foreign film in 85, La Diagonale du Fou, a French film. And this is, is looking for Bobby Fischer, a very good one, too. It's a, a couple in the United States. They discover that their child has a is highly talented for chess and they hire a super elite trainer to uh, turn this ch child into a world champion. From the pedagogic point of view, there's much to criticize in this movie, uh, but not here. This is a training session, which is uh, really related to what I just explained. Remember this position. Don't move until this is clear in your head. Don't look at me looking for help. I can't do anything without moving the pieces. Of course you can. In your head, move the pieces one by one. And your opponent will be alone, like a knight on, in a corner. Knight 
Knight to A8, what the child didn't see with all the pieces on the chessboard with his eyes, now he can e easily see it in his head, he has to assess it with his head, with his brain. Let's change views, and I'm going to speak about something that I really love here. In the last few months, I reached the conclusion, after talking with more than 100 teachers in the world, I concluded that the best age to introducing chess in school is not really the first primary school years, but uh, between two and five years of age. I know that this might surprise you a lot, because most of you know that abstract intelligence uh, ends at five or six, except for um, highly talented people. Why teaching chess? to two or three-year-olds. I don't mean that it's not good to do it at five or six or seven. It's always good. We can adapt to any age. But for practical and biological reasons, I reached this conclusion. The sooner the better. Our curriculum is overloaded in Spain and in other countries of, uh, of the world. In the secondary level, in primary level, uh, the more and more subject matters, it's, it's too much for our children, financial education, nutrition, whatever. Too many subject matters in their little heads. And I really observed that the uh, teachers for very young children are vocational, are really involved, because they have to use their own body in teaching. Because a three-year-old, I mean, if you don't do uh, what he needs to do, you have to do things for him to copy you. So you, that's that's the way. And at this young age, the concept of losing or winning is not developed. They want to enjoy playing, and if we succeed in doing li chess literacy, that is moving the pieces, the elementary rules, at five, when they get to primary school, if they are all literate, all schools can decide later on what they, do, they want to do with chess classes. One hour a week, or in, other in other schools it's used in uh, English classes, in physics, in maths, in technology classes, classes in many other uh, subject matters. And I insist, and I compared that with many and I discussed with 100 people in the uh, tuition world. And why I am so enthusiastic about what I've seen. I've seen it in Montevideo with uh, two to five year olds. It's a school called Bath Ferreira. I asked the psychologist directing this uh, school, why do you use chess and why don't you use other board uh, games? Well, we worked with another board game, but we met this chess uh, teacher. He's excellent. But the main reason is that teachers, after five to five weeks, they didn't know to do with other um, with other chess game uh, with other board games with Pachisi. And chess is infinite. You can use with on, only the pawns, with a free board with knights, without the bishops. We can have many resources, and it's not boring because it has many, many combinations. We are more resourceful with chess. In Adriana Salazar School in Bogota, she works with children from three to five year old. And 100% of students and they don't do any IQ tests. All families able to pay tuition can have the children there. 100% of four-year-olds in Adriana Salazar's class uh, know how to play chess and they play violin. At three years of age, Adriana puts a giant chessboard on the floor. She puts a nice music, and the words of the music teaches children how to move the uh, pawns. And the teacher gets to a little girl and say, you are a pawn. 
and you are very audacious and you're very courageous and you're not going to go back uh, in your column. This is your column, you cannot go right, you cannot go left. This is your column. You cannot go back and because you're uh, very courageous, you cannot do whatever you like. You play once and you wait until your uh, roommate plays and then you can play again. On, under the motto, uh, learning by playing and playing by learning, in a very simple way, we are conveying essential messages to, be, to your very young children. Psychomotricity, elementary geometry with diagonals, with right, right uh, lines, columns, respect for roommates, control of primary impulses, uh, uh, reasoned uh, decision making making and this is just for children of three at uh, four years old in another class she shows a chessboard on the wall with only pawns because they only know how to move pawns the teacher says without moving from your tables you have to tell me what is changing in this position if the white pawn which is in e4 eats the black pawn in d5 what happens in this situation and a little girl gets up and says well well there's nothing in the position on the white uh, pawn and where the black pawn is there's going to be there's going to be a, a, a white one she's not guessing she's developing her spatial calculation skills so this uh, interdisciplinary method for chess I'm not referring to the very young children from two to five years old it's for all the ages in fact for example, I'm seeing in Mexico with Gaspar Oz, in Mexico we trained more than 3,000 chess teachers. And the processes are always the same. The first day they get to the seminar, to this training course, and then I see the mixture of curiosity, skepticism, fear. Oh, teachers are afraid of uh, learning chess and using chess. The second day they are just mad. They are applaud and they're so happy because they learn a lot from the pragmatic point of view maybe some sometimes our uh, method is more or less interesting but a math teacher in a school where his or her teachers are um, used to chess uh, is happy this teacher is happy because uh, there is a, a great part of math that can be explained uh, using chess because it's more interesting for children for example Maybe all these people in this room, because of our age, we uh, know this figure of this rectangle, which is uh, with straight lines. But in the empty chessboard, you take a diagonal. On this diagonal line, you can build a different kind of rectangle, which is crooked. And children from minute one know that rectangles can be crooked or slanted. How can we explain the concept of a circumference in a chessboard which is square? It's very easy. We put a knight in the center. We mark with a cross all the uh, squares where the knight can jump. We can join that and we have a circle. We can ask, how many squares do we have in a chess uh, board? It's not easy to answer because squares are 64, but we can form many more squares according to your combinations of little squares. And I don't want to elaborate on this, but in, during our seminars, there are two speakers who deal with chess resources for, the math, for math classes or to all mathematical elements present in chess and that can be used for math classes later on. In the English or language classes, what really works is to have a white and black knight on the chessboard and a lot of squares are occupied by verbs and verb tenses in future and in present tense. The exercise is the following. The white knight has to eat all the um, present tense square and the other knight eats the other uh, or the past tense verbs. We can build a hundred and hundreds and hundreds of examples so that these classes are more efficient and more interesting for children. We can do it in English too, because English teachers are asking for more conversation time. They need to have more uh, conversation time uh, about grammar 
or above grammar uh, time. And in fact, if we give this in English, we are giving more content to the English uh, class, and we're not uh, deducing anything to other classes, to other subject matters. This is very important. We can explain it, explain it in less than 10 minutes. In this room, I don't need to explain who uh, Howard Gardner is. Out of the eight um, Intelligences uh, of Gardner, what is clear is that it at least develops five of the skills of intelligence in Gardner's head. Linguistics, uh, mathematical logic, uh, spatial uh, logic, and then common sense skills, intrapersonal skills. If I don't know myself good enough, well enough, how I'm going to play chess. I need to know my weak points, my strong points, what are my best positions, what is my comfort zone, where are my uh, mistakes, and the interpersonal skill is exactly the same. I don't remember your name, sorry, Juan Pablo. If I w play against Juan Pablo tomorrow, it's during a tournament, the more I, prove, I know about Juan Pablo today, not just as a player, but as a person, his character, for instance, that I will play much better against him tomorrow because I know him. I need to know what is his uh, comfort zone, what is his favorite position, what are his typical mistakes. And with this information, what can happen, it could seem paradoxical. At a moment in time, I could provoke a spe specific combination because he's got an advantage in, in his position. I give him a, an advantage. I know him. I give him his position because I know that in he, that position, he commits mistakes, even though though he's uh, in a better position than me. But take this beyond. If we applied at Adriana Salazar's methods with his, her children, with chessboard, the music, and children running away in the giant chessboard, in fact, what we're doing is developing also through chess musical and uh, body uh, skills. And if we apply methods of Jaiza Maldonado, the sub principal of uh, Playa Onda School in Lanzarote, who applies educational chess for creativity, we would also develop the naturalistic skill. So the conclusion is that chess develops five of Gartner's intelligences, and all of them depending on the method we use. This is very interesting since it is a new contribution. We knew that chess developed cognitive intelligence, but it also develops emotional intelligence. According to a paper published by three psychologists in La Laguna who compared school children that in after school classes would play chess, and they compared uh, these um, students with other that played Football. I'm not against football. I want to make this warning. But according to this survey, in terms of emotional intelligence, chess develops that farther than football or basketball. Which are these? Elements, self-esteem, motivation, discipline, adaptation, good relationship with teachers, respect for rules, sociability, making decisions. This is a global outlook of the current situation. But it is changing for the better day after day. Demand for chess as, a, as an educational tool is growing. And I would ask you to pay more attention to the lower group than to the group at the bottom that are small and not um, small countries, and at the bottom we have big countries with much influence. In Cuba, they have 
developed sport chess very much following the Soviet method, which is excellent for sports development. But for educational purposes, they are lag they lack behind. As I was saying, the number of countries that can go from the bottom to the top, among them Spain, is growing constantly. This has a lot to do with what I mentioned about the European Parliament and for 115 EMPs from extreme right to extreme left voting for the same. Before going, before changing matters, I'd like to underline the difference between sports chess and educational chess. They have to go hand in hand without crossing each other. There might be a cross-cutting line uniting both. What I am referring to, well, if we have a city with different schools that are teaching educational chess, the most normal thing would be that the federation will go head hunting to scout children playing chess and would, will invite them to join their club to get sports. Uh, training for chess. That is wonderful. I, 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 I don't have anything against that. But let's not think that the goal of chess in school is to train chess players because otherwise the school master will uh, decide to get rid of chess classes. What happens in this movie? Well, this character is a trainer of world champions, and he is a good trainer as a trainer, but let's see. Tell me that you won't discuss my games even if you think that you're right. I promise you. I know all his games, so it'll be him who will teach you and you will become him. I promise. Good. New rules. It's over with Blitz Chess. I know you like it, but it's not good. It's over with games at Washington Square. They are mediocre. No, they are losers. And if you don't want to end up like them, forget about them. They are not mediocre. They are. Good. Who are you? What do you mean? I mean, who are you? None of them. They are just pieces. You are this one. You are this. You are the king. This last bit, uh, those of you who are trainers will agree with me, this last bit is right from an educational point of view. You are the king, you are in charge of what happens to other pieces. But the trainer told him some things that forgets that children have to play. Children must play, even if they are wonderful or highly gifted for in tennis, piano or chess. They have to enjoy it. And trainers sometimes, and even uh, parents, forget about that. And in this case, in this movie, that's the case until the director changes uh, the direction of the movie and they 
prohibidas las partidas rápidas en Washington Change their Square. decision. You see how the trainer si forbids the child to go and play chess on Washington Square. Well, there are many people any time of the day playing chess in a very interesting um, mixture of different classes. Um, Armani clad, Wall Street sharks playing chess against homeless, for instance. And so the, the parents take finally the child to Washington Square, and this is what happens. You want to play? Two minutes. What's that? Slave and opening. What did you take that from? Uh, my teacher taught me that. Forget about it. Play with your guts. You're playing how not to lose, but you have to risk it all. You have to play to win, not not to lose. Play. Focus on the man, focusing on the board. Don't focus on the board. You have to beat me, not the board. So I have to focus on you? Yes. So much better, right? Good. Much better. Come on. Great. Fine. Oh my god, that was great. What is that, mate? You have to play with your guts. You have to focus on me. These are complementary pieces of advice, sometimes uh, contradictory to what the trainer uh, said the child. But this man knows that the child has to enjoy and take into account down-to-earth elements, not just uh, highbrow chess. Now I'm going to change gears, but let me explain why. I don't. I was not born in Bilbao. They are um, pretty much audacious or brave. I come from Irún. We are much more modest. But I hope I convinced you that chess is a very interesting educational tool. But a very logical question can, might come up. OK, there are many other things uh, other than chess, right? Yes, that's true. But let me invite you to do a, an intellectual exercise. I have drawn up a list of 10 reasons to support chess. And all but two are going to be explained very shortly. And please implement all these qualities to any other subject that you consider to have educational interest. And let's see what are your final findings. I guess that you won't find many that comply with this all 10. So first one, we sometimes run uh, seminars uh, talking about that for a whole week. But we are going to have a talk today at 3.30, as I said, but Ariana is having another one at 5 that I recommend. And then we have Gredo San Diego school representatives here. They are a co-op that support chess very much. And they have a communication, a presentation at 11.45, half hour uh, after we finish here. So not much uh, more needs to be said about this. Second point, I have
have devoted much time to this point. The best gym for mine is... Why is it so important? Because in Spain and in most developed countries, life expectancy is going up and up. Uh, in Spain, men's life expectancy is over 80, which is wonderful, but it implies a very severe economic problem. All governments, regardless of their ideology, have to devolve huge amounts of money to take care of older people, and that is very expensive. So. The notion of the uh, gym for the mind is uh, uh, so important. We need some gym for the mind, and chess is very suitable here. Why? Because chess develops memory and concentration very much, which is what is affected by, by Alzheimer's disease. Since I noticed this, I met many neurologists and I found very interesting service. And the most interesting one is this uh, interview with a very Jersey doctor at Washington Post. Uh, he is the leader of the research team in Albert Einstein um, Center, they ran a survey following many people for many years, some learn uh, foreign languages, music, would go for walks or hiking, and those that increase their cognition reserve the most, which is a depository that the more full it is, the least chances for having dementia. So those who increased that reservoir the most were the chess players, then bridge players, and a good piece of news for you, the third one was those that went dancing. Why? Because that demands much coordination between the brain and the body. The sentence, doctors will soon recommend a game of chess together with exercise and a healthy diet was recommended by a very renowned neurologist. I have attended many neurology conferences. I've been asked many questions. And this is my finding. The frequent practice of chess has a later causes a later aging of the brain of the brain delays the frequent practice of chess delays brain aging and could prevent Alzheimer's. So this has very good benefits for the patient and for their families. Delays also the death of Alzheimer's uh, disease patients. As for other social uses, or profits is not for just for normal students. For the blind, it is the most practiced world, uh, game in the world. In many of the things in this list, the world reference is Extremadura, a region in Spain. 
where a miracle took place some eight years ago. The socialist government uh, in Extremadura promoted chess for the unemployed to find a job for the poor uh, to improve their self-esteem for cancer patient children as well and when the government changed the new government kept these programs which shows that they work pretty well with autist children autistic children or autistic patients have been using chess in whole and very widely because if we try to communicate with autistic people, the most probable uh, thing is that they won't respond to us. But if we play with them without touching them uh, at the chess board, after some games, they will consider us close to them and communication, verbal communication, will come up. Asperger's syndrome it is a moderate variant of autism. In Rivas, in Madrid, they have been implementing chess with Asperger syndrome children and after many uh, some hours they can mix these children with normal students hyperactive Children are, their number is growing constantly, and a psychiatrist from the Puerta de Hierro Hospital in Madrid has recently published a very interesting survey in moderate and severe sorry, in mild and moderate hyperactive cases, chess can relieve the symptoms. He is using chess with these children after stabilizing them using drugs. Then, once they have been stabilized, he substitutes drugs for chess. And this fits perfectly with testimonials from many hyperactive children all around the world that don't know each other and all tell me the same. The only way for my child to spend more than 30 minutes focused on something is to play chess. We have tried with other things, but they didn't work. Down syndrome. Every time I remember a case in Mexico DF, um, in Mexico City, mm, there's this place that they have achieving extraordinary results with children with Down syndrome. What about highly gifted children? Well, this works perfectly because for the gifted, chess is an infinite challenge. In Pamplona, they are using chess with people with schizophrenia. And when I was referring to the prevention of consequences, I was thinking about my experience in prisons. In Almería prison, for instance, I spent a full day and I met this prisoner that had been classified as very dangerous. He was rehabbed uh, thanks to chess and he told me chess must be good for everybody but it is wonderful for us because it makes us think in the consequences of what we are about to do before doing it. Same for 
reform schools and with drug addicts. A month ago, I attended a symposium on drug addiction and in a rehab center in Extremadura, where the director is amazed at the results of chess with their patients. They rehabilitate much part of memory and concentration with people that have tried everything and that when they reach their center, their brain is totally destroyed. Next point, chess is the only game that can be played on the internet. Try to play football or golf on the internet. <laughs> Not only you can play chess, but also you can teach it as good as if the trainer was with you. So it has huge advantages in different environments. The International Chess Federation has 182 member countries, only football and athletics or track and field has, have so many members. Another reason, it is very cheap. The basic infrastructure is so cheap, which uh, makes it easier. Another element, this is very interesting. If we go out on the street here in Bilbao or in Johannesburg, Reykjavik or Oakland, and we ask the first 100 persons that we meet, if we ask them, what is chess for you? Uh, most of them will refer to intelligence or to smart people. Chess is linked with smartness, and that's why Coca-Cola is launching a message of this country or this string being good for smart people, or this bank is saying uh, we are so smart that as chess players and if you put your money with us, we will know how to increase its value. Any politician or a company that links their image to chess, they are linking this image to intelligence. Chess comes from 1,500 years ago. How many activities can be so proud about that? Imagine you are a journalist like me or a teacher. How many resources we've had that are so old for, to make our chronicle, uh, our articles and classes interesting and fun? How many interesting things happened in the last 1,500 centuries? And how many interesting characters can we find in so many years? I can give a one-hour talk referring to which members of the chess community that appear on screen. They are all wonderful characters. And last but not least, the connections of chess with art, literature, music. In chess, math and music are the fields where we find most highly gifted children. As for science, the best I can recommend is my book, published two years ago on all connections between chess, psychiatry, computers, math, neurology, etc., etc. Let me finish with a Indian saying to which I add a word. I would say chess is an ocean where a mosquito can drink and an elephant bathes. In this hall, in this room, no one can be an elephant anymore because you have to start before age eight to reach to the international elite. But between the mosquito and the elephant, there's a whole scale of animals of different sizes and to have fun 
with chess or to teach children chess and in school, you just have to be something more than a mosquito. Some training hours are enough in order to do that. So I hope you find your place in the scale of animals between mosquito and elephants, and I hope you enjoyed my talk. Thank you very much.